the clarity. One of the significant advantages that you receive as a consequence of access to my unrivaled material is the clarity that I will bring to you and your understanding. Set aside emotional thinking and listen to the logic of what I explain to you. As I've explained many times, I do this for the creation of my legacy, and you benefit from that. It is a collateral consequence of the achievement of my legacy, and embrace that benefit. I don't do this because I care. I don't do this because I am a good person. I can occasion good outcomes, should the outcome suit me. And this is an instance where that is the case. Clarity is what I provide for you. Clarity through the application of logic. Clarity through the removal of misunderstanding, myths and dangerous advice that others who do not understand narcissism propagate. That failure either arrives from not having the insight that I have, or the obscuring effect of emotional thinking, or the pretensions and the grandiosity of unaware mid-range narcissists continuing to churn out information that suits their unknown agenda. I know my agenda. It is to create a legacy. I know my agenda is to provide you with the reality of the way that my kind think. The cold, brutal truth. I do not care if it troubles you. I do not care if it upsets you. But what it will do is liberate you. You do not have to like me. All you need to do is learn from me. That is what matters. In the video, The Wrong Focus, I explained how we, in effect, through our narcissism, and our manipulations construct the wrong focus so that you end up concentrating on us rather than yourselves. And this, in turn, hinders you, prevents you from moving forward, and allows us to keep you where we want you, miserable, confused, and wallowing in emotional thinking. I provided you with 30 constituent parts of the wrong focus. And therefore you might ask, what are the answers and observations to those questions and comments? As part of giving you that clarity, I am now going to give you those answers which will enable you to avoid the detrimental impact of the wrong focus and thus, in turn, allow you to concentrate on yourself and your own needs. Number one. You will wonder why we treated you so terribly after we were so wonderful to you. We did this because you stopped providing us with the potent positive fuel. Either the potency became stale or you failed to provide it to us frequently enough and or in large enough amounts and therefore driven by our narcissism and the need to control you and to be properly fueled, we switched to drawing negative fuel from you in order to maintain our existence. Number two. You will want to know how we could have just left you after everything that you did for us. We are able to do so with absolute ease. We attach you to us. We are not attached to you. We have no sense of obligation, no sense of remorse, guilt or conscience. You are an object, a commodity that is being utilized for our benefit. We only think of our needs whether consciously, greater or ultra, 
or unconsciously, where lesser or mid-range. You are just an appliance to us. You are not a person. Something else has our interest now. You failed us. Therefore, from our perspective, you failed us, and therefore we can jettison you, and we focus on somebody else instead. Number three, you will be perplexed as to how we are able to move on to somebody else so soon after being with you, especially since we said that you and I were soulmates, and that we would be together until the end of time. Such, such comments arise from our magical thinking, and they are just a form of flattery, a benign manipulation doled out to control you. We scatter them like confetti in order to seduce you. The comments were not genuine, and the moment that you are of no use to us, we can just walk away. Why? Because the things that we said about you were not genuine. If they were, we wouldn't have treated you in the way that we did. We would not have devalued you. We would not have disengaged from you. And that tells you that what came first cannot be genuine. Number four, what are we doing with our new acquisition? Where you were the intimate partner primary source and you've been replaced? Essentially, what we did with you. Seducing them and giving them the embedded golden period. We will apply similar techniques to how we charm and mesmerize them as we did with you. Expect us to say the same things. Take them to the same places. Buy the same gifts and so forth with some slight variations on a theme. Number five. How are they better than you? How long have you got? From our perspective, they are more beautiful, more loving, more intelligent, more successful, more fun, more admiring, more adoring. In fact, because they are painted white and you are painted black, everything about you we never liked, and everything about them is wonderful. The reality is, however... This is just part of the black and white thinking, and that they are no better than you, save when viewed through our narcissistic perspective. We claim them to be more beautiful than you, because we are infatuated with them, and we now despise you. We claim that they are more loving than you, not as an objective comparison between the love that you gave to us and the love that they give to us, but simply because they are viewed white, therefore they are praised, and you are viewed black, therefore you are devalued. Number six. Are we happy with that person now? We do not feel happy. We feel engorged by the power that surges through us from the fuel that we are provided. We tell everyone that we are happy, though, either consciously or unconsciously, to maintain appearances, to maintain the facade. And, as a collateral consequence, you may well hear about our apparent huge joy with this person and are thus triangulated and controlled, and therefore you may also provide us with fuel. 7. What has that person got that you have not? To us, everything. They are easier to control they provide us with the most potent positive fuel, the most brilliant character traits, and amazing residual benefits. Again, this is unknown by the unaware narcissist and consciously known by the greater ultra-narcissist. Of course, it is part of the infatuation. In your reality, you and that other person are little different. Indeed, you may well be surprised by just how much in common you have with them. Number eight, she doesn't even seem like our type, so why on earth have we chosen her? She provides the empathic, class and special traits that we look for, which lead to the provision of the prime aims. We have been able to bring her under control. That is the type that we have, but you do not realise this, because you look at it through your world lens. Nine, you spend your time on X watch as you stalk our social media and that of the new target to see what we are doing together, what we are saying to one another, and looking for any signs of trouble in this relationship. Your emotional thinking wants you doing this, because then you will not move on and you will continue to feed your addiction. There is pointless you watching. All you're doing is furthering the misery for you. 
you will be treated to the facade of everything being wonderful. And indeed, at this juncture it is, you will not see any signs of trouble in paradise, because it is the golden period. Indeed, we will pump out the propaganda, explaining how wonderful the relationship is with the relationship bulletins. This is primarily done to control the new primary source, and not, contrary to popular opinion, to rile you. You, as the former intimate partner of primary source, are persona non grata. I will be expanding on that in a separate video, as it merits specific attention. Number 10. You want our new relationship to fail, so that you feel better and validated, because the same thing has happened to the new target as it did to you. We understand this, because we regard this as how hateful and horrible you are, and makes us wonder why on earth we ever chose you. However, the individual will fail us in due course. We will not accept that or admit it because of the infatuation. But the dynamic between narcissist and intimate partner primary source is one whereby the relationship will always fail in terms of entering devaluation. Number 11. You feel a need to prove that you are happy, even though you aren't, and that you need us to know that this is the case. You consider ways in which you can convey this message to us. This is you being misled by your emotional thinking, as it wants you to continue to interact with us, the narcissist, to feed your addiction. Do not bother with these steps. All you will do is kick the hornet's nest. We will be dismissive, either ignoring you, or you will be treated to a malign hoover. You are better off not focusing on us at all. Number 12. You wonder what you could do to win us back. Do not bother. You will not succeed. And to do so would be contrary to your best interests. You will only provide us with fuel. You will suffer an adverse reaction because we do not want you. And you will increase your emotional thinking all the more, making it painful and more difficult for you to move forward to freedom at an increased pace. You will be hoovered soon enough. That should be your concern. You should focus on utilising the period where we are not interested in you to build your no-contact and reduce your emotional thinking. 13. You repeatedly wonder what mistakes you made that caused the relationship to fall apart. From our perspective, how long have you got for us to list your litany of transgressions? The fact is, this is the case from our perspective. You actually did nothing wrong from your perspective, but your emotional thinking will cause you to believe that you did as you try and get answers, unable to accept that somebody just does this, that somebody just walks away from you, that somebody just treats you badly. From our perspective, there are clear and cogent reasons, but you don't know them when it happens because you don't know that you're dealing with a narcissist. Number 14. You begin to imagine what is going on between those four walls that you knew so well once upon a time, becoming fixated with considering what is happening in our new relationship. You should not do this. This is a breach of no contact. You are heightening your emotional thinking and allowing it to govern you. The answer is, everything that happened between you and I will be repeated between me and them. It is fascinating just how similar it actually is. 15. You relive the day that you had with us and think about whether we are doing the same things with a new person as we did with you. Yes, we are. This ends part one of the clarity. Part 2 will continue to give you the clear and distinct answers to the various questions that race around your mind as part of the wrong focus. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.